In this lesson, we'll be animating a camera and a null object with it to act as a dolly so that it's easier to move our camera around. Okay, so in our last lesson, we got all of these uh, leaf layers set up in Z space, and now we're gonna add a camera that's really going to bring this to life. This is one of my favorite parts of the 3D system inside of After Effects. So let's go ahead and add in the layers that we need. So the first layer we'll do is a camera layer. So go to Layer, New, Camera. And for our purposes in this course, I'm just gonna simply use the camera with its default settings. But if you wanna start playing around with this on your own, changing the focal length is a great way to get different kinds of looks. If you take this maybe down to like 18 millimeters instead of 50, you're really going to get um, something that looks maybe a little bit more like a camera that you would see, get a little more of a wide angle. Um, so that's totally up to you how you want to handle that. So go ahead and say okay, just with the default settings for us today. And um, with this default camera, we can start to manipulate it around our scene. So if we come up here and choose the unified camera tool, it's going to allow us to use three different clicks on our mouse to manipulate the camera in the three different ways it can move. Forwards and backwards in Z space, side to side or up and down in the X and Y axis or we can rotate. So with a left click, that's going to allow us to rotate. You see how the cursor changes to this rotation. And if I just start kind of clicking around, you can see now we've rotated um, and we're looking more downward and up kind of to the side. And you can kind of see how those layers correspond to what we were looking at when we were looking at the top down view. You can see how they look a little bit different. Um, or you can right click to zoom, which is one of my favorite things that you can do with this camera tool. It's um, just really, really helpful whenever you're wanting to just kind of move through a scene. Um, and then you can also middle click to move up or to the side or down or possibly to the other side. So um, there's all of these different ways that you can start to use this. And you have to get a little bit used to the unified camera tool because sometimes, especially when you have a lot of three layers like we have here, it's a little bit difficult to tell what's actually happening. Um, it looks like I've you know turned the camera upside down here. So that's why I like to use a null object because it's a little bit easier to control. So we'll go into our camera here and hit reset. And that's just gonna put it back where it was before we started manipulating everything. And then we'll go up to layer and create a null object. So go to new null object. And to be able to use this with our camera, there's a couple things we need to do. So first we need to turn on our 3D switch. So we get those uh, nice X, Y, and Z handles on the null object. And then we need to parent the camera to the null. So go ahead and grab that parenting pick whip. We've done this before and drag it onto the null. Okay, so now Anytime we move the null object, the camera is going to move with it. So let's go up there and grab our selection tool. And first I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So grab that Z handle and just pull it backwards. And you can see we've zoomed into our scene. We can also push this down beneath everything. You can kind of start to see how this is going to look when we start the part where we go underwater. This is what it's gonna look like from underneath. And you can go side to side with the Z axis as well, but I'm not going to change that part yet. And you can also rotate this if you wanted to. You could grab your rotation tool, come over here to the Y handle, manipulate that a little bit, and you've rotated in the Y axis. If we come up above our uh, plants, you can kind of see how this is rotated a bit. You can see from the lines here how this looks like it's changed, how that has turned. Pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna re, uh, reset this one as well. And then we'll go ahead and start setting some keyframes. So I'm gonna move to the first frame of my scene. We can go ahead and set a keyframe here if you like. Uh, let's take a look at what our position is here. We're just at zero. Um, but we can move forward a little bit if you want to, if you wanna start um, maybe a little bit zoomed in. It's kind of up to you exactly how you want the shot set up. So we'll go ahead and set a position keyframe here. And then we'll move to the end of our timeline 
and we'll just go ahead and pull forward so that we're much, much further in Z space just like this. You can kind of see how we start to come out over the open area of the water. But then let's also push this down. So I'm going to grab the Y handle and go down beneath everything. We'll go down pretty far here. So I'm just going to keep pulling this down until I can't see the plants anymore. And we might want to middle click just to pull that down a little bit more so we can see the top of the composition, see when it disappears. And just kind of keep pushing that in. Okay, so now let's do a RAM preview to see what we've created. I'm just going to hit the zero key on my number pad, but you can also open up the uh, preview panel if you want to be able to see that. So you can see how this is kind of zooming in, but it's also moving down because as the Y axis changes from the first keyframe to this keyframe, we don't just zoom forward and then go down. We only have two keyframes set. So if we want to be able to go out about halfway to the middle before we start moving down in the Z axis, we will need to set that up with our camera. Um, so as you can see, this does take a little bit of time to render as well. So it's... Um, just trying to cache all of those frames can be kind of difficult, especially if you're looking at this at um, a full resolution like we are. We're looking at this at 50%, but we do get all of those pixels. So you may w even want to go into your RAM preview settings and turn those down if you're um, experiencing too long of a time to wait for this to RAM preview. I'm going to pause the recording while we let this finish up just so you don't have to watch this kind of eking through all of the frames and then we'll come back and set a few more keyframes just to get comfortable and more familiar with the camera. Okay so our RAM preview has finished up and you can kind of see how this looks over time. So we get this really interesting, really nice zoom effect, but we are having the issue of it just kind of um, going straight down in one motion. So that's not really what I want. So whenever you set up a camera movement like what we've done here, where you kind of get your first and last in place, you have to do a few things to get the middle one in here um, looking the way that you want. So if I'm at the Y position of 360, at this point, and I move forward in time, you can see this has gone down to 754. So let's change this one to 360, and that's gonna put us above everything. So all we'll see here is the Y position change, but it looks like we're still getting a little bit of a change in that, um, or the Z position change. We're still getting a little bit of a Y position change. Um, if I come here, we see it's 360, and if I come here, we see it's 360 again, but in the middle, we get a little bit of a strange effect where this changes. And this is because of the spatial interpolation and how it changes that value in between those two keyframes whenever you've already set up three. Now this happens a lot of times with a camera and if I ran preview this for you, you would get almost this kind of boomerang effect. So the way to fix this is to select both of your keyframes, right click, go to keyframe interpolation, or you can go up to animation and go to keyframe interpolation from there. And you'll see our spatial interpolation is set to continuous Bezier. In this situation, that's not what we want. So we're going to change that to linear. Go ahead and say OK. And you'll see that number switches back to 360. And now we're going to get a straight pan across or straight zoom across through until this keyframe before the Y numbers ever start to change. So let's watch a RAM preview of this. I'm going to hit the zero key to RAM preview, pause to wait on it, and then we'll come back once it's finished uh, caching all of those frames. Okay, that has finished RAM previewing, so let's just watch that back. And now we get this nice zoom, and we go down beneath the water and come out here on the other side, kind of just zoomed in further. So our Y dimension doesn't actually start changing until five seconds from five to 10 seconds. So this is gonna work really nicely for the rough camera movement that we'll be using in this course. We will go back in a few lessons and really start to perfect this, figure out the timing of everything, smooth it out, maybe add a few more keyframes. Um, but for now, this is gonna work just great. So um, in our next lesson, we're going to learn 
how we can start to pre-compose 3D layers with collapse transformations. So right now we're kind of running into the issue of um, this area here is getting really big and that we've only added you know these few t uh looks like 22 layers from here to here so um really that is um something that we're going to have to be mindful of you know not letting our timeline get too uh bogged down with so many different layers so we're going to learn how we can pre-compose all of these layers together and how incorporating that 3d switch with our pre-comp um, affects the look of everything and how to fix that um, and still be able to use the camera movement um, with some of our other layers later on <laughs>